Hi, my name is Tony Johnson. I'm the lead pastor at 242 Community Church. This past week, we've discovered some devastating and quite frankly infuriating news uh, that has really rocked our community and rocked our church. Uh, this morning, I shared with all seven of our campuses not only that information, but also some pastoral words from me about how we should respond and how we as a church will continue to respond uh, in light of this news. Uh, we wanted to share it first and foremost with our, our church community. That's why we didn't stream it this morning. But, but now we want to share it with the, the general population because we believe in transparency. Uh, we believe in handling this with integrity. And when we know information that we're able to share, we're going to share that widely. Why? Because, because we believe that's what the church is supposed to do and that's how the church is supposed to respond. We stand firmly upon, upon the promises of Jesus, that he is victorious even when we walk through the valleys, Jesus is victorious, so we lean into him. I, I wanna thank you for watching this conversation, and I wanna thank you, even more importantly, for your willingness, because I know you are, your willingness to be prayer, praying for 242 and all those affected. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we need to take some time today to share some news with you, and. Um, the nature of what I'm about to share is, is going to be difficult to hear, difficult to receive, difficult to deliver. That said, the, uh, this is likely not suitable for children to hear, and so parents, if you're here and you've brought your children into the auditorium this morning, we want to give you the opportunity to, to exit now. And uh, we'll give you that moment here, and um, in just a moment, we'll get started. Well, my name is Craig Ryan. And I'm the chairman of the leadership advisory team here at 242. And if you're not familiar with what the leadership advisory team is, if you've been in church around other churches in a different context, you might hear our team better described as elders. And that's essentially what we are. We just go by a different name here at 242. And I'm here to read a letter on behalf of the entire leadership advisory team here at the church. <clears throat> It is with the heaviest of hearts that we must share with you some very disturbing news. On Friday, September 13th, church leadership was informed that a staff member here at 242 Community Church discovered a hidden video camera located inside a unisex bathroom in the backstage area of our Brighton campus. Will Johnson, our former worship pastor director, confessed to church leadership that he placed the camera in that location and he was immediately terminated. Church leadership quickly notified the Livingston County Sheriff's Office who arrested Johnson Friday evening. At this time, we're not aware of the full scope of this crime, but we are fully cooperating with the ongoing investigation. Just like you, we're shocked and we're deeply saddened by this situation as the protection, safety, and privacy of every person who enters our church is our priority. Our commitment to you is to be fully transparent and care for all the victims of this crime. At this time, the Sheriff's Office doesn't have any indication that cameras were placed elsewhere in the facility. Church leadership thoroughly searched all of our facilities yesterday, again today, and tomorrow out of an abundance of caution we will engage the services of a third party professional service to help us continue to do those sweeps. Like you, 
that. We're devastated. Our desire and our consistent commitment is that the church should be the safest place in our community. Which is why Will Johnson and all of our employees undergo thorough background checks. We consider this a violation against our entire church. If you have information or you feel that you've been a victim of this crime, please contact Detective Kurt Navarra, and his information is up here on the screen. You can take this opportunity to jot that down, take a picture if you'd like, and we'll have that up periodically throughout the rest of the service as well. For those of you in attendance here in Brighton this morning, we have folks from Community Mental Health that will be here to help us journey through this together. They'll be on the basketball court during and after this service. For our entire church community, if you need to speak to someone, please contact your campus pastor. And as I close, I'm reminded of the words of David in Psalm 62, verse 8. It says, trust in him in all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him. God is our refuge. Will you pray with me this morning? And as we do, can I, if you're able, can I ask you to move into the aisles, move to the walls, Will you get on your knees with me? Get on your knees with me this morning if you can. Maybe you just turn around in your seat, put your elbows on your chair. Let's go to our Father and our Savior this morning. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, we come to you and we pray pour out our hearts to you. Your word reminds us of and promises us that you are our refuge and you are our strength. God, we don't have the words to properly describe what we're feeling or to properly describe the evil that has taken place. But in this moment, here and now, Father, we pray that you would bind Satan from this church, from the families, the individuals that are represented by it. God, we know you have already won the war. And Father, we pray boldly that you would not let Satan win this battle. Lord, we pray for the victims. We pray that they would, that you would be so present in their lives, that you would love them, that we would walk alongside them well that they would lean into you. Father, I pray for Will. I pray that he would surrender his life to you fully and completely. God, I pray for Will's family. I pray that you would just wrap them in your love they would feel that, that they would feel their church family coming around them and walking through this with them. I pray for the staff and the leadership here at 242 that we would continue to focus squarely and intently on you in the coming minutes 
and hours and days. Father, I pray for everyone here this morning. That they would rest in what we just talked about, that your word says that you can be trusted at all times, in times like this, especially times like this. We praise you in this storm. And it's in your precious and powerful name that we pray. Amen. Oh, I appreciate you. to start by um, acknowledging that if this is the first time you've ever walked through the doors of 242, I am deeply sorry that this is your first experience with us. This is not what I would have hoped for you for your first time or for any time uh, for that matter. Um, but at the same time, I am thankful that you're here. Um, there is there's no easy way to navigate such a horrendous and difficult matter. I am heartbroken. I am saddened and I am infuriated. I love this church. It is my job and the job of our staff to protect not just the church, but every individual that walks through these doors. This has been a violation of our trust. It's a violation of the call that God has upon us to help people take next steps with God. This is an assault upon the entire church. It's a betrayal of the trust that I put in him. And it's a betrayal of the trust that you put in us. Over the past 20 or 48 hours, myself, along with our staff, have shed more tears than we thought possible. We have prayed harder and more fervently than we ever have. Because you deserve better. Your families deserve better. Your community deserves better. I have seen firsthand how the Holy Spirit has been on the move at 242. How lives have changed and transformed. How things have happened that we have stood back and looked and said that this had nothing to do with staff. It was because of the presence of the Holy Spirit because God is on the move at 242. And when God is on the move, the enemy attacks. We knew this. We were prepared for this. We just did not know the attack would be like this. I've racked my brain for two days trying to figure out the words to say to you. And the truth is, there's nothing I can say to you that's going to fix it today. I am sorry. As your lead pastor, I am sorry. I am sorry that the trust that you put in us was betrayed. I'm sorry that the place that should be the safest place for you was violated. I'm sorry for any of you who have experienced hurt and abuse in the past. And this has made those feelings come to the surface again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the feelings that you're wrestling with was because of an evil action from someone in the leadership of the church. It is heartbreaking reality that the darkness of this world at times will infiltrate the place that is meant to be a beacon of light in our communities. And it makes us wonder how we respond. How do you respond to this kind of betrayal and violation? 
I think we begin by feeling what we feel. No doubt you are feeling shock and disbelief. Some of you are infuriated. Some of you are saddened. Some of you are in deep grief. Some of you have such a mixed bag of emotions right now, you don't even know how to label what you're feeling in this moment. I pray that you hear me when I tell you this. Your feelings, they are valid, they are fair, and they are real. It is okay to feel what you're feeling. You know, in Scripture, there are many moments that we see righteous anger. We see Jesus with righteous anger. We see, we see anger rise up in Jesus when there is an injustice. It is moments like this where there's been an injustice in our world, an injustice to innocent people, an injustice within the body of Christ, and anger in that moment is okay, it is expected. And it's also very natural to experience grief and sorrow and mourning. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 reminds us of this truth when it says there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. Today, my friends, is a time to mourn. It's a time to weep. It's a time to be angry. Feel your feelings. God is not afraid or threatened by the feelings that you feel. But don't feel them alone. Have community in your life where you can feel those and experience those with others. Have someone to talk to, to lean into, to allow them to care for you and pastor you. One of our values at 242 is community because we know that life is better with others in it.